Okay, hi guys. So today I'm just going to show how to write a simple compare matrix function that will take two matrices and return true if they're the same and false if they're different. Uh, and a matrix in our problem will be defined as an array of arrays. So basically an array of any level of nested arrays. The reason that we can't just use the equals equals operator to compare is because in JavaScript, arrays are objects and objects cannot be compared using the equals equals operator. Unless, of course, they are actually the same exact object. So to demonstrate, in the console, I can let a equals to an empty array. And then I can let b equals to a. And now a and b are pointing to the same object in memory. So if I check a equals equals b, that is going to return true. But if I let a third variable c equals to the same thing, an empty array, even though the contents of both A and B are exactly the same, if I check A equals equals C, then it's going to return false. That's because they're pointing to different objects in memory. They're not the exact same object. So if we want to find out if two objects have the same contents, we can write our own function. So here I'm calling our function compare matrix. And we can go ahead and define our IOCE first, our input output constraints and edge cases. Okay, so for our input, I'm gonna say two matrices, and that's gonna be basically an array of arrays nested any level deep. And then for our output, it's gonna be true or false, so Boolean value, and then constraints basically optimize and then edge cases empty array or just array of arrays nested several levels deep great okay so for this function i'm going to write it recursively Recursive functions do take up more space due to the space required on the call stack. However, for readability, I will write it recursively. So our function takes two arguments, A and B, both matrices. And those are the two matrices to compare. And for our base case, I'm going to return true if A is equal to B and false otherwise. But we should only be comparing if they are not arrays or if either isn't an array. So I can say if a array dot is array, so if a is not an array or b is not an array. So basically if either is not an array, then I will be comparing. So we'll return a equals b. So this will return false if either one is an array and the other one isn't, or if the values are not equal, uh, and then it will return true if they are equal. So great. Otherwise, they're both arrays, and we can start looping through our array and comparing at each indice. So we can start writing our for loop for let i is equal to zero, and we want to loop until i is still less than the max length between a and b. So math dot max of a dot length or b dot length. Oops. That way if one stops short, it will still be caught by our base case and return false. And i plus plus. Okay, so inside our for loop, we want to compare each item at each respective indice to make sure that they are the same. So essentially, we are comparing if a at i is going to be the same as b at i. However, we're not sure if these items are arrays, so we can't just use the trip equal operator. We can, however, use our own function, so we can pass a of i and b of i into our own function. So we'll call compare matrix and we'll call it with a at i and b at i. And since compare matrix will return true or false, we just need to store this result. So above the for loop, I will create a variable let out equals to true. And it'll be true until we find a mismatch. And then I'll let the result here be stored into out. So if we do find a mismatch, it will store it as false into out. 
However, if out is false, to prevent it from being overwritten with true, if say in the next iteration the next two items do match, we should have a check right here. So we can check if out is true, then we'll still go ahead and store it into out. Otherwise, return false. Great, so now we just need to return out at the end. So basically, either we found a mismatch and hit this return statement and we return false out of the function, or we keep getting matches and we keep comparing them and storing them into out. Now, if it's the final two items to compare in the array, it could be a mismatch and then store false into out, then we exit the for loop and we return out, which could still possibly be false. So that's why we wouldn't just return true here instead of out. Okay, great. So now uh, we can test our test cases. You can see that I've created a ton of test cases here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And you can see that everything does pass. So now we'll go ahead and look at time and space complexity. So for time complexity, if we define n to be all of the items in our matrix, however deep it may be nested, then since we're only looking at each item at most once, then our time complexity will be O of n, which we could say is still linear. For space complexity, since each time we call our function recursively, it places another call on the call stack, which takes up space, then the max space we would need would be the depth of the array. So basically, however many levels deep our arrays are nested. And since the max depth would be n, then we can also say that our space complexity is O of n, which would make this also linear. Okay, great. And that's it for this solution. So if you guys have any questions, corrections, suggestions, or a better solution that you guys want to share, please let me know. And thanks for watching. Bye.